Hey fam, welcome to my channel. If you've found me through Psych2Go, welcome, and if you haven't, of course, welcome. But to the Psych2Go family, an extra hello. Um, so I had an idea, because you guys want me to do readings, but I don't know what to read. So I thought, why don't I check my notepad and just search a certain word, a random word, and whatever comes up, that's what I'll read. So I asked my friend for a suggestion of a word, and he chose a flame. Nothing came up for a flame, but when I spaced it out and searched a flame as two words, um, there were three very interesting pieces, none of which I had written, um, but one of them was about a green snake and a lily. I haven't even read it, so I'm going to be reading it for the first time as I read it to you. Um, my channel is going to be a lot more relaxed. I'm not going to edit out my breathing or anything like that, so I'm sorry if it bothers you. Um, and then, as usual, just random footage of pretty things that I saw today and some weird green <laughs> things from something else. Okay, let's begin. The Fairy Tale of the Green Snake and the Beautiful Lily by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, translated by Thomas Carlyle, 1832. In his little hut by the great river, which a heavy rain had swollen to overflowing, lay an ancient ferryman, asleep, wearied by the toil of the day. In the middle of the night, loud voices awoke him. He heard that it was travelers wishing to be carried over. Stepping out, he saw two large willow-wisps hovering to and fro on his boat, which lay moored. They said they were in violent haste, and should have been already on the other side. The old ferryman made no loitering, pushed off and steered with his usual skill, obliquely through the stream. While the two strangers whiffled and hissed together, in an unknown very rapid tongue, and every now and then broke out into loud laughter, hopping about, at one time on the gunwale and the seats, and another on the bottom of the boat. The boat is keeling, cried the old man. If you don't be quiet, it'll overset. Be seated, gentlemen of the wisp. As this advice, <laughs> what is this? Why is this in my phone? I'm sorry. Okay, we'll continue. At this advice, they burst into a fit of laughter mocked the old man, and were more unquiet than ever. He bore their mischief with silence, and soon reached the farther shore. Here is for your labor, cried the travelers. As they shook themselves, a heap of glittering gold pieces jingled down into the wet boat. For heaven's sake, what are you about? cried the old man. You will ruin me forever. Had a single piece of gold gotten into the water, the stream which cannot suffer gold would have risen in horrid waves and swallowed both my skiff and me, and who knows how it might have fared with you in that case. Here, take back the gold. We can take nothing back which we have once shaken from us, said the lights. Then you give me the trouble, said the old man, stooping down and gathering the pieces into his cap, of raking them together and carrying them ashore and burying them. The lights had leaped from the boat, but the old man cried, Stay, where is my fare? If you take no gold, you may work for nothing, cried the will-o'-wisps. You must know that I am only to be paid with fruits of the earth. Fruits of the earth? We despise them, and have never tasted them. And yet, I cannot let you go, till you have promised that you will deliver me three cabbages, three artichokes, and three large onions. I don't know what's happening here. The lights were making off with jests, but they felt themselves in some inexplicable manner, fastened to the ground. It was the unpleasant feeling they had what? It was the unpleasantest feeling they had ever had. They engaged to pay him his demands as soon as possible. He let them go and pushed away. He was gone a good distance when they called to him Old man Ha <laughs> it says Holla Holla, old man The main point is forgotten. He was off, however, and did not hear them. He had fallen quickly down the side of the river, where, in a rocky spot which the water had never reached, he meant to bury the pernicious gold. 
Here, between two high crags, he found a monstrous chasm, shook the metal into it, and steered back to his cottage. Now in this chasm lay the fair green snake, who was roused from her sleep by the gold coming chinking down. No sooner did she fix her eye on the glittering coins than she ate them all up with the greatest relish on the spot and carefully picked out such pieces as were scattered in the chinks of the rock. Scarcely had she swallowed them when, with extreme delight, she began to feel the metal melting in her innards and spreading all over her body and soon, to her lively joy, she observed that she was growing transparent and luminous. Long ago, she had been told that this was possible, but now being doubtful whether such a light could last, her curiosity and her desire to be secure against her future drove her from her cell, that she might see who it was that had shaken in this precious metal. She found no one. The more delightful was it to admire her own appearance and her graceful brightness, as she crawled along through the roots and bushes and spread out her light among her grass. Every leaf seemed of emerald, every flower was dyed with her new glory. It was in vain that she crossed her celerity thickets, but her hopes rose high when, on reaching her open country, she perceived from afar a brilliancy resembling her own. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop here. Uh, it's, uh, it's translated in a way that is kind of difficult for me to follow and make it smooth and a nice, nice listen. So, um, this will be a test. So let me know if you would like me to continue doing random readings and pick a word, not a crazy word, like a word that I would actually potentially use while writing myself drunken messages in my notepad or songs or poems, that, you know, like love and nostalgia and hurt and heartache and things like that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.